P, you go, ah! Oh, point. You okay, can't. all right. All right. Oh, no, I lost my guy. Oh, there we go. Oh. Come on. Oh. Ah! Almost. Oh, no, no, no. Come on. Oh, wait. We're supposed to start the show. We did it again. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to Unlocking Science. I'm your host, Mr. P. Our goal is to glorify God by studying and unlocking the secrets of his amazing creation. So we're here again, obviously doing some more magnet stuff with Dr. Faulkner. We've had a couple episodes. Uh, we're going to get back to that battle later, and I'm going to finish you off this time. Okay, so today we're doing our hands-on activity, and we've talked a lot about magnetism and about electromagnetism. So you should go back and watch those two episodes. And when we think about electromagnetism, we're thinking about the obviously from just what the words mean the electrical and magnetical interaction what's the relationship between those two well they both produce fields you have an electric field there's disturbance in space and a magnetic field disturbance in space and when you move a magnetic field you produce an electric field and if you have an electric field there you can produce a magnetic field and it goes back and forth in a very complex interplay okay so we talked about the idea if we want to generate electricity we can have a magnet outside of a coil like this we spin the coil uh, maybe there's a turbine of some sort that's run by steam or a hand a crank fired a hand crank where i grew up in southern idaho we have lots of hydroelectric dams so the falling water spins the turbine that causes this copper coil to spin the magnets generate the electrical field and then the magnetic field pushes back we get that interplay between the two and we get current <laughs> which is the flow of electricity so we can generate electricity then, on the other hand, we send that electricity down and it runs into something like this blender and that process reverses. So down here inside the motor housing, there's another coil of copper wires with magnets and the current's going the opposite direction. So it makes it spin and makes these blades turn and we can make fun foods with our blender and, and use all kinds of useful things taking advantage of that energy. So the, the little activity, we've got two different activities for you today. The first one we're gonna make, we're going to need a few simple things. So you need a piece of bare copper wire, like this one I've got here, anywhere between probably, uh, it's a little over a foot, about 12 inches. This is a 20 gauge, I don't know, this is a 16 gauge. So anywhere between 16 gauge to 20 gauge, and you even can, you up can, to a 14 gauge. You can work. pick that up at a hardware store, but also a hobby section sure. of, of a store. Yep, lots of different ways to get a hold of that. The smaller the wire, the better it will operate and be a little cleaner. So what we're ultimately gonna get is a shape that looks like this one here. And here's how we do that. I'm gonna take my regular piece of, of copper wire here, and I'm gonna fold it right down to the middle, and I'm gonna get about to the point here so they're about the same length and I'm going to crimp this nice and tight. What I'm trying to do there is make a good point. That point, that was my knuckle popping, <laughs> that point right there is going to be our balance point on the center of the battery. So I'm going to get this nice and straight and then we're going to try to make two bends that'll look about like this. Now what I did, you could use um, anything you wanted to, but this little tube here, piece of copper pipe that we used in the episode, I made a bend around there to get it even and flipped it around this way. The more balanced you can make this, the smoother it's going to operate. So I've got my bends in there, so you can see I've got this basic shape there. Try and get these sides as straight as possible. They don't have to be perfect, it'll work okay. And then I'm going to line up the battery. So here I'm going to use a double A battery. Cell, cell, cell. There you go. What's the difference between a battery and a cell? A cell is an individual one, and, and a battery is where you put several of them together, two or more. So is this a battery or a cell? Mm, that is a battery. Because it has six of these little cells inside of it arranged in series. Yep. If this produces 1.5 volts, this produces 9 volts because there are six 1.5 volt cells. Yep. Six times 1.5 is nine volts. Yep. Okay. But in common talk, most people refer to this as a battery. They do. Even though we know it's wrong. I'm fighting <laughs> a losing war, I know. Okay, so I'm gonna <laughs> take this now and I wanna get this just a little bit longer than the bottom of the battery. Hold that there. 
Now this doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it can get, get pretty close. I'm going to start with about this shape. It's just longer than the battery. Now the reason I want it just longer than the battery, I've lost my magnets. Oh, here they are. The reason I want it just longer than the battery is I'm going to stick the, the magnets down to the bottom here. And then this is going to ride, this copper is going to ride against there. So I've got a good length for that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Those are some strong magnets we've got there. Okay, now the next <clears throat> trick is to get our wire. We want to turn it into a loop. So you can see the little coil that I've got here. This roughly matches the shape of here. So all you're going to do is take your wire and put it about in the middle and just bend it around so it matches the shape there as good as you can. And then this one will flip over. Get that bent around. Now here's where we get into the tweaking. So we've got our basic shape. So now I can take my wire. This one's small gauge enough that I can just grab it and twist it. Now what I don't want is this wire to contact this one. So I'm going to snip off that little extra tip right there just so we don't contact the other. So the goal is to get this to line up in a very specific way so that this will ride in here and just barely oh, no, contact. It's going. It took off all by itself, <laughs> okay? Sometimes you have to give it a little nudge to get it going, but that one's great. You did a great job first time out. First time out. Now what I could do is I can tighten up these loops and adjust them to make better contact around here. The other thing I had to do, if we can get the camera in here tight. Oh, I got our battery <laughs> stuck together. You notice that this one here has a dimple in the tip of it, and this one doesn't. So what I did is I just took my screwdriver right here, and I lightly, lightly tapped it with a hammer and made that little dimple in the tip. This is something that a parent should be doing with their kids, helping them out. You don't want to rupture that cell. If you hit no. it too hard, you can. It's a real mess with the acid coming out. There's actually an alkaline <clears throat> substance yeah. in there, not an acid. That's true. That's true. Your car battery has acid. Yeah, I corrected your physics, you yep. corrected the chemistry. You make a good team, don't we? We do. <laughs> okay, so contrary to popular belief and what your mom told you, there is not acid inside of this battery. But there's just as nasty of a toxic alkaline in there that yep. can burn you as well. So once I get this on here, I can set the, <clears throat> set the cell. I've got my dimple made and I can make myself a little ballerina out of this copper wire. And, and, watch and what you have is a little motor working there. Yeah, so what we've done is we've created exactly what we described a minute ago. We've got current coming from the battery, creating that electrical flow, passing down around that electrical field, generating that magnetic electrical interaction down around the base, and that one is going to town. It is. I'm impressed the first time out on that one. Fun Usually little, it takes a bunch of, <laughs> bunch of a rigging bunch of it to make it work. Fun little activity you can do to, to just demonstrate that electrical motor. And then try all different kinds of shapes. Can you make a spiral one or different things that you can do with this? Okay, second activity involves creating an electromagnet. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn something that's not magnetic, like this screwdriver. Now it's important for this activity that you get a screwdriver that's not magnetized. You can see uh, that's picking up one or so BBs, but this is not magnetic. It's not grabbing those BBs. A lot of them are, are given a magnetic, uh, a magnetic tip, so they'll pick up screws and hold on to them. Yeah. We talked about that before, mm -hmm. but you want to avoid that if you can. Absolutely. And it's now, best to use a Phillips head too. Yes, a Phillips head will work better for this because you can slide the wire on and off. Now, all of these instructions are going to be on the Unlocking Science webpage, so you can find the link to that down in the, uh, in the description. And the uh, PDF you can download for parents to print that off. There'll be an experiment to go along with these things as well. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a regular screwdriver that's not magnetic, and we're going to turn it into a magnetic object by using inductive fields and electricity. So I've got some regular, um, this wire is necessary for this one to be coated wire. So here we used an uncoated wire. This actually has a shield, a plastic shield around the outside of it that's insulated so it won't pass electric current. But if you look inside, you can see there's copper wire. Now this is called stranded wire because it's a bunch of little tiny copper strands um, that are put together. The wire that we used for the other one 
is a solid wire. It doesn't matter which one you use for this experiment. Um, either this, one will this work. This one's okay. easier to bend. Yes, definitely easier to bend. You can pick up uh, this in hardware stores, automotive stores, oh, yeah. anywhere like that, pretty inexpensively. You might just have some laying around the house. But if you're stealing it out of dad's garage, ask, ask first. first. <laughs> <laughs> and put his screwdrivers back where you got them from. Okay? So what you're going to do, we're going to devise an experiment where you're going to test what causes this electric field uh, this to induce the magnetic field in the, mo in the strongest way possible. So you're going to cut three different lengths of wire. You're going to do one that's going to make a 12 inch, one that's going to make a 24, and one that's going to make a 36. So here we have, um, this is 12 inches plus 6 inches on either side, and I'll show you why in just a second. This one is 24, so it's 30 inches with six, 3 inches on either side, and this one is 42. So it's got that extra length on the end. So what we ultimately want to wind up with is something that looks like this. So how are we going to do that? Well, first, we're going to need to mark the ends of this. So just take something like a tape measure or a ruler, and we're going to mark three inches with our marker. I'm going to make a mark at three inches on both ends of this. It doesn't get stuck in the tip there. Once I've got one marked, I can just bend this over and mark the other one. And that should be about 12 inches in between those. That doesn't look long enough. No, that's pretty short. I think I might have cut this too short. Yeah, you want to cut another one? Uh, oh, I only cut it 12 inches. Uh -huh. That's why. Okay. So you need well, 18. We'll demonstrate the principle here. All right. So we've got a three inch tag on either end and I've got that marked. So when I wind it up around the screwdriver, I'll be able to see where those marks are. Okay. You want to go ahead and cut me some electrical tape. I'll need about two two inch pieces and then one tiny little tag. While he's doing that, I've got some wire strippers here, which make this task a little easier. I'm going to use the strippers down here to strip off a little less than a half an inch of the insulation. If you don't have a pair of wire strippers, you can also just use a utility knife or a pair of scissors and you can just score around there. So using a blade like this one, you can take this and just gently score around there. So again, this is an activity where we're using sharp objects, pliers and things. Kids, make sure you've got mom and dad's help. Mom and dad, you wanna help the younger ones use these sharp tools and supervise that. So I've got my ends trimmed. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this where my three inch mark was right toward the end of the screwdriver here. And I'm gonna grab one of these pieces of tape and tape this down. Doesn't have to look pretty so it doesn't slip off of there. And then I'm going to tightly coil this around here until I get up to my other mark that I made. Now we've only got six inches here. We should have 12 because I mismeasured, but this will demonstrate the principle for you. So there's my other mark. So I'm gonna wrap this around so they're coming out the same way. So I know I've got six inches coiled up there. And now I'm going to just tie that off so that that coils nice and tight. So I've got a good tight coil. Yours, when you make it, will be about twice as long with the 12 inches. And I've got these tails hanging out here. These tails are important because this is where I'm going to connect the cell to provide the power. I'm going to use this little short piece of tape on one end and only on one end. And I'll explain why in just a second. Now what I can do is I can take the this is going to be on the this way positive end away from the tip of the screwdriver and when I connect this come down here see that I'm able to pick up those BBs because okay? I've created that electrical field and eh, my tape slipped off there a bigger piece I just got to get it unfolded I'm only taping one end of this for a very specific reason if I just leave this wire rolled around here, it creates a resistance that's going to generate a lot of heat. Now this is only six inches of wire, so it's not giving me a lot of magnetic force. You can see now it's picking up those BBs. I let go and it'll fall right off. If I were to leave this connected here, it would basically turn this into a heater. 
<laughs> if we think about a heater, a space heater you might have in your basement, it's basically a coil of wires that are intended to create resistance from that electrical flow. And we're going to be very careful with this. You never want to leave this connected for more than a few seconds at a time or it'll get too hot. I used to have electric socks in the winter yes. and uh, keep your toes nice and warm. <laughs> if you smell anything burning or you feel the battery <laughs> getting hot, you need to stop immediately, set it aside for a few minutes and let it cool down. Uh, that's especially true if you use like a nine volt battery or a lantern battery like one of these they will get hot very quickly because they're a higher voltage. So you need to do it as quickly as you can run your test. So you're gonna create one of these with a 12 inch coil. <clears throat> then you're gonna create one with the second wire that it's gonna be 24 inches of wire coiled. And then you're gonna create a third one with the longer wire that's gonna give you 36 inches of wire coiled. Coil that around the screwdriver. Now, the goal here is for you to predict and then experiment with this to see how many BBs the different lengths of wire will pick up. You could also substitute something like uh, small paper clips. Use something small though, not a big paper clip because you might not see a difference in that. And you're going to predict and then experiment with this and see which one works the best. You could also try different cells. You could try a C cell or a D cell. Uh, you can try the batteries, a nine volt or a, the six volt lantern batteries you're going to be exploring and messing around with these things to try and figure out how they work and what makes them work. And then use your data. You're gonna collect good data by writing down your results carefully in your data table, and then trying to understand and analyze those things. You think this is kind of like what those scientists were doing that we talked about in the episode earlier oh, yeah. in the week? They were messing around. <laughs> So, I think kids are naturally good scientists. They like to play with things. They like to try this and try that. And uh, it's a learning experience. You're playing, but yet you're learning. <laughs> uh, it wasn't the years later I figured out half the stuff I was doing growing up, I was actually being a scientist. Yeah. And so we want you to do that. God has created an amazing world for us, and we want you to be exploring and understanding all of the amazing things he's made for us. So dig into these experiments. Go back and watch the episodes and learn more about that, get out and explore God's creation. But until we see you next time, we're going back to our game of class. That's right. Who's up? I think you're serving. All right. <laughs>